Hello, in this video I want to go over a worksheet from section 10.4. So we're introducing game theory. So in this worksheet we're going to set up a payoff matrix and then learn how to look for a saddle points of this payoff matrix. But first let's take a look at the scenario. Suppose we have two competitive pet shops. Wonderfully named the Cats Me Wow and Pug Life. And they want to open stores uh, somewhere on Lake Tahoe, where there's currently no pet shops. Um, let's suppose they will choose to set up shop at one of three main population centers. Tahoe City, which has 20% of Tahoe's population. Incline Village, 30% of the population. And South Lake Tahoe, 50% of the population. All these numbers are blatantly made up, by the way. But we're also going to assume if both shops open in the same population center, they both open in, say, Tahoe City, then they're going to split all the business equally. If they open in two different centers, then they each get all the business from the center of which they open, plus half of the business in the third unoccupied population center. All right, so we want to figure out what is the best strategy to uh, open up these shops. And you might be able to analyze this and just, you know, kind of see automatically what both shops should do. But even if you do see that, I want to go through that and, and learn how to set up these payoff matrices, learn how to analyze these type of competitive situations analytically. Okay, so let's start with a couple scenarios. Let's suppose that uh, Cats Me Wow opens up at Tahoe City. So I'm going to write Cats Tahoe City right there. And Pug Life opens in South Lake Tahoe. So I'm write Pug for South Tahoe. And that means nobody's opened up at Incline. Okay, so according to uh, the setup, Cats Muau gets everything in Tahoe City, which is 20%. And I'm looking at what percent will the Cats Muau cats get. If Pug Life opens in South Tahoe, then and Cats Muau opens up in Tahoe City, Cats Muau gets nothing from South Tahoe. And since uh, neither of them are an incline, they're going to split that 15 or that 30 percent evenly. So in this scenario, um, we get 35. So 0.35. All right. Let's look at a couple more scenarios. What if Cats Me Wow opens in Tahoe City. So that's the same scenario. But now we're going to have Pug Life opens at Incline. So no one is in South Tahoe. And we have Pug Life in Incline Village. Look at the same thing. Cats Me Wow gets all 20% of Tahoe City. Pug Life gets all of Incline Village, so we're looking for what Cats Me Wow share, so they get zero of Incline. And now they're going to split Tahoe City, or excuse me, South Tahoe. South Tahoe has 50% of the population, so Cats Me Wow gets half of that, 25%. All right, so if we look here, uh, this is looking better for the Cats Me Wow. And lastly, if Cats Me Wow and Pug Life both open at Tahoe City, what percent will Tahoe's business get? Uh, sorry, what percent of Tahoe's business will the Cats Me Wow get? We're looking at here, if they open at the same population center, then they split all of the business evenly. So we can crunch through these numbers again, but this is going to be 50%. All right, so we're getting to setting up a uh, payoff matrix. So we're looking right here, the cats move out and shop. Each row responds to the cats Mewow's shop where they open up. And each column represents where Pug Life 
opens. But each entry, we're going to so we're going to assume though that each entry of the business is cat's meow. Wow. So cat's meow wow, wow is market share. So if we want to fill this in, we have if they both open in Tahoe City, that's a 0.5. If cat's opens up in Tahoe and pug life opens in Incline Village, that's the second scenario, that's the 0.45. And lastly, if Tahoe City opens up in, uh, sorry, if Cat's Meow opens up in Tahoe City and Pug Life opens up in South Tahoe, then Cat's Meow gets 35%. Okay, so what I want to do is fill out the rest of this uh, payoff matrix. One thing to note, there's, a couple, there's four, sorry, uh, six more positions to fill in. But if they both open in the same place, we're going to get that 0.5. If they both open in Incline, it's 0.5. If they both open in South Shore, it's 0.5. All right. So um, if you want to kind of practice the setup, I suggest you pause it and see if you could fill in the rest of these values. Otherwise, I kind of went through, I sketched out in very my messy handwriting. How to actually compute these values. So right here, if we look at cats opens at incline, pug life opens in Tahoe City, and neither of them in South Shore, and cats gets 30, zero from incline, and they split that 50%. So then we would get 55% if cats are in incline and pug life is Tahoe City. And if Katz is an incline and Pug Life's in South Tahoe, that means Katz gets none of that 50% and they split that 20%. So then Katz gets 40% of the market share of Tahoe. And if Katz is in South Tahoe, Pug Life is in Tahoe City, and um, they split incline, no one's an incline. Then that's better for cat's meow. They get 50% plus 15% to make this 65%. And then finally, we can compute this last value is going to be 60%. So here we have a payoff matrix for a game. And this is a, an example of a zero sum game. Meaning all of these are for uh, cats me wow. But if I wanted to write this payoff matrix for pug life instead, it would be identical except subtract one. So it would be 0 0.5, 0 0.45, 0 0.35, 0 0.55, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Essentially it would be the same matrix, but you subtract one extract all the entries from one to get the pug life um, market share. So zero sum just means whatever cat's meow gets, pug life does not and vice versa. Okay, so we wanna look at this uh, in 10.4, we're gonna be looking at what are called saddle points. So I'm gonna go to the back of the page here. So how do we get the saddle point? Fairly simple actually, we're gonna circle the smallest value in each row then box the largest value in each column. So smallest value in row, largest value in each column. So if I look right here, I'm gonna circle the smallest value in each row. So that's gonna be the 0.35 in the first row, 0.4 in the second row, and in the third row, we have the 0.5. That's the smallest value. And now in each column, I'm going to box the largest value, 0.65. Right here, we've got 0 0.6 is the largest value in the third column. Second column, and the third column, the largest value is 0.5. So we do have a saddle point. It is possible to have no saddle points or multiple saddle points, any values, but we have um, the three, three entry of 0.5 is a saddle. All 
All right. Okay. So what do we do with this? Um, a saddle point is an optimal solution. So basically what's saying is here, both stores, the pug's life, cat's me wow, should open shop. That's why I think of that was South Lake Tahoe. So looking at this, if your cats be wow, you don't want to pick Tahoe City because at best you're going to get half the market share. You don't really want to pick Incline. There's two chances of getting half or more. But if Pug's Life picks Tahoe, they're going to um, get a, a larger share. Whereas if your cats be wow, you want to pick South Tahoe because at worst you're going to get that 50%. And if you're thinking in the terms of Pug Life, it's everything is the opposite. So you want to pick Tahoe because on Pug's Life, you're going to get 65%, 60%, or 50 So either way, if both stores pick Tahoe, they're going to both get it split at least the, uh, the market share via 50-50. Whereas if either store picks the other two cities, they could end up with a worse share. All right, and that is kind of the main idea about these saddle points. If one exists, it is, uh, we say this game uh, is complete or solved. So if we look at one more right here, let's say we have two large shopping marts, um, Right Way and Cash Mart, and each store chooses um, ad, television, radio, newspaper, email, how to send out advertisements. And a marketing research uh, firm provide the following payoff matrix. So basically it looks at uh, past data and depending on whether each store chose TV, radio, paper, newspaper, or email, then their market share increases or decreases. So note right here, each um, row represents right ways choice. So if I were to look at, say, this three, this three means right way increases 3%. If they choose radio and Cash Mart chooses email, because we're always going to assume the row is the payoff value, so this is right ways choice, and each column is going to be the opponent. In this case, it's Cashway. So I made this example up. R for rows, C for columns. Okay, so that's how we read this uh, payoff matrix. If we want to locate the saddle point, I'm going to do the same exact thing as before. I'm going to go and circle the smallest value in each row. And for the first row, that does happen twice. So minus two, minus two. For the second row, I get one and one. For the third row, the smallest value is negative one. And for the fourth row, the smallest value is one. All right, now I want to go through and box. Back up here. Box the largest value in each column. So if we box the largest value in each column, first column I get one and one. The second column, largest value is two. It happens multiple times. The third uh, column has one as the largest value and it happens twice. And the fourth column, the largest value is three. So lo locate the saddle points. And we actually get four of them. There are four saddle points. Uh, the saddle points do not have to be unique, but notice the values are all 